Hello and welcome to Matthew Reads, I guess. Um, today I'm going to be talking about The Black Flamingo by Dean Atter. Well, just as I thought. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping. So now, the rumours are true, I may have been screaming and crying and fighting for my life to get a half-decent photo of this for my Instagram. Who could have seen that coming? Also, I do have an Instagram and Twitter. Follow me on those if you'd really like. Wig, did you just say wig? Yes. Also, at any point, if you like the video, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you really want. But anyway, yeah, as it, as is apparently tradition, like, the you know, the blurb, it says that this isn't about getting ready. It's not even about fierce or fearlessness. It's about being free. And, you know, then it goes on to say that Michael, who is our lovely protagonist, Michael waits in the stage wings wearing a pink wig, pink fluffy coat and black heels and that one more step will see him illuminated in the spotlight. He's been on a journey of bravery to be who he is and questions whether he can emerge as the Black Flamingo. So like the main big thing I did take away from this blurb that it, you know, it was a story about, not to use the fighting for your life analogy, but you know, fighting for your life to be like who you really are without any fear. Be who you are. And now, like, the very, very first thing I noticed about this book is that it's not, like, written in traditional prose. Like, I've just opened to, like, page 30. It won't really spoil anything. But you can see that it, if you just get rid of me, you can see that it's in, like, almost, like, poetic verse. And, you know, I, like, I was a big fan of this, you know, in this book because, you know, because my brain keeps wanting to say screaming and crying, fighting for my life, that stupid meme. But, like, because this is a book about, like, you know, fighting to, like, get out of that box, it, like, made, like, each page its own thing. And, you know, since this book is about, you know, fighting to be who you are and, like, living without fear, like, it makes sense that the pages are like this because then it's, like, the pages themselves saying, no, we're not going to fit into that normal box of, like, I guess just, like, paragraphs of prose. And there were, like, even if I just, like, open it up to, like, one, one of the pages, if I can find one, like, there are bits that have, like, like, little illustrations. Like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to, like, open a page and accidentally spoil anything. And then there are some pages that are, like, you know, like, in black ink instead of just, like, the regular ones as well. Anyway, like, the book, it opens by saying that Michael Brown, our black flamingo in question, like, was born a bad egg without complete love. But we also do find out that, like, it basically his father walked out on him when he was young. And, like, for his sixth birthday, he says he wanted one thing, and that was a Barbie. But then, like, when it came to his birthday, he ended up not getting it. And, like, maybe it's because I relate to him as being a queer child. Well, not literally right now a child. But from being a queer child myself, like, I definitely, like, felt his disappointment. But then, like, his mum says that he, like, didn't think he was being serious. But that if he is being serious, she'll get him one. And then she does, and like, now tell me why that made me so emotional. <laughs> also, there's like this whole speech that his mum gives him, like, it's on page 35 about how he should never let anyone tell him that, like, he's half anything. Because he is, in fact, you know, a full human, like, a whole person. And then, like, the book, it pretty much, like, f it's, like, a literal coming-of-age book, basically, because, like, it follows Michael from, like, I don't remember how young he was at the start, but he goes from at least age six to, like, university. And it's so, like, interesting because at one point we see, like, his mother, like, she's dating this man, but then obviously they break up. And then, like, Michael's opinion of the man, you know, like, drastically changes. Because, like, at the start of it, like, Michael saw this man's car as, like, something really cool, but, like, when he stopped coming around, the car ended up becoming something bad. Also, it, we find out, like, if, if the whole setup for this, like, hadn't told you already, like, we find out pretty early that Michael is going to be queer, or at least, you know, some, in the, like, you know, in the non-straight realm, because, like, he play it, like, it mentions that he plays Kiss Chase, but never kisses the girls, and, like, he plays husband and wife with the boys, but always played the wife. And then there's, like, this point, like, when he's in high school, he's reading in the library with this girl, Daisy. And he says that, like, when he reads books, he often, like, gets lost and loses where he is. But, like, he doesn't get like that with poetry. Specifically, Maya Angelou gets mentioned. So I did think that's probably why, in a way, the book is formatted like it is. 
like it's you know formatted poetically like poetry because Michael says that like he doesn't get lost it like reading poetry and this book is the way that he essentially finds himself and now like as part of like Michael growing up there's this moment in high school where he like plucks up the courage to tell this guy that he likes that he likes him and I mean like all power to Michael you know because I would have never been able to do that in high school I mean yes in part to the fact that I didn't realize I was queer then but besties that is a level of confidence that I wish I would have had when I was his age <laughs> And, like, when Michael does tell him that he likes him, it is every bit as awkward and as uncomfortable as I'd hoped it would be and, like, as awkward as you would expect it to be for, like, two kids in a high school. And, like, that isn't a dig in any way because, like, that is literally just what teenagers are like. <laughs> you know, but, like, then he continues to grow up as people usually do. Like, the bad things that happen to him, they start getting worse, but not like literally worse. They get worse in the way that like, he's starting to understand that like, the bad things that happened are actually bad things. And you know, he makes a bad choice or two that like, I'm not gonna spoil for the sake of the story. <laughs> but you know, like, when he gets to university, like, even though his mum ends up giving him that speech like, early on, that like, he should never like, let anyone tell him that he's half anything, like, he, like, he goes to, like, join some societies, but, like, he says, and I'm just gonna, like, read from my notes off this, like, he doesn't feel black enough for the African Caribbean society, not Greek enough for the Hellenic society, and not queer enough for the LGBT society. Which, I mean, yes, that was a shame for him, but, like, it's, it, like, all of those things are, like, integral to the story, and, like, you know, in all of this, he ends up joining, like, the drag society at his university. And also, I'd love to know, like, what sort of, like, what university is he going to that has, like, so many societies? Like, maybe the one I went to is ju was just small. Like, my uni did not have that many societies. <laughs> and yeah, to, like, sort of start to close this out, like, this book is, like, about the self. Obviously, it is, because, like, like, it, like, the blurb literally says it's a journey of bravery, so obviously it's about the self. But, like, there's this poem right at the end of the book that's titled How to Come Out. And, you know, I that was something I really appreciated it, because it, like, framed coming out as, like, what it really is. As, like, this thing that, like, you don't have to do unless you want to, because the fact of the matter is it should be your choice. Um, ciao. Anyway, so... And, you know, like I said, it was nice to see it, like, embodied as just, like, part of your young queer existence or just, like, your queer existence. Like, obviously I have no problem with, like, you know, stories and books that, like, make coming out this whole big thing. Because, like, for some people, it is that. So, you know, those books do speak to, like, one part of, like, people's truths. And then there's, like, the fact that it's, like... The fact that this book, you know, circles it out as, like, just this thing that, like, isn't that big. Like, I really appreciated that as well, because that is also true. Like, obviously for some people it is big and for some people it isn't. And, you know, to see it addressed as just something, as, like, a way of people finding out who they are, like, I appreciated it, because, like, that's sort of how mine went as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed this book, like, a lot more than I was expecting to. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know what it was that I was expecting from it, but I'm very happy that I read it. And you know, I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. Um, have you read The Black Flamingo? Are you gonna, you know, are you gonna pick it up and read it after this? Um, yeah, and I think that's where I'm gonna leave this, so um, yeah, thank you for watching. Okay, bye.